Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have an art journal video for you today, and it is my January interpretation of the Mission Inspiration prompt. So our prompt this year has a theme and a color combination, at least this prompt does. The theme is still life, and the colors are blue, pink, and purple. And this is still life in your own style. I am not necessarily um, drawing talented, but I did take a photograph of some of my major winter necessities that are sitting right here on my desk and decided to do a collage still life. I will begin with this piece of mixed media paper that is about five and a half by eight and a half. And I am going to use some gel medium and attach this pink scrapbook paper, pattern paper, whatever you want to call it, to my mixed media paper. It does have a little bit of design at the bottom, which will be just kind of fun and cute, kind of mimics that design in my tissue paper box or my tissue box. So winter time, I always have winter allergies. They're almost as bad in the winter for me as they are in the spring. Just the wet nasty gets to me. I always use hand cream and I drink a ton of water in the winter time. Those are my winter necessities. Now that I have mixed or gel medium on my paper, I am going to flip that over and kind of adhere the scrapbook paper, the pattern paper to it. The good thing about gel medium as a liquid adhesive, it means you have a little bit of give time so I can line that up really well on two sides and then I'll be able to trim off the two sides that are slightly longer than what I needed. I will go ahead and add a layer of gel medium to the top of this pattern paper so that I can create a non-porous surface to work on. I am also going to use my heat tool to get this started to dry. I will put it aside and work on my collage elements for a bit, but I do want to get this mostly dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm just using my Wagner heat tool there. So for my collage elements, I wanted to take that picture of my water bottle, my tissue box, and my hand cream and trace those shapes onto some pattern paper. So I have a purple pattern paper. It's got a really small polka dot and I'm going to use um, carbon paper. In Mike's video, which I will link below, he did a, another trick where you, you know, you just color the back of the paper, but I've got this carbon paper that I hardly ever use. I figured why not use what's in my stash. So I am going to put the carbon paper um, shiny side down onto my pattern paper and put my photograph on top. And I'm going to use a ball stylus and just trace or outline the shape of my cup. I'm not worrying too much about super details, but I do want to get the lid and the shape of the tumbler especially down so that I can layer these collage elements. I have picked three different colored pieces of paper for my collage elements. I will be using some more of that pink pattern paper for the hand cream. I have a blue pattern paper for the tissue box and a purple paper here for my tumbler for my, my water cup. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. I am I have sped this up some. I think it's kind of double speed for the, the tracing of the image. Um, I probably could have sped it up just a little bit more. But I noticed because I was tracing, if I sped it up more, it looked like my hand was just kind of being weird. <laughs> it, did, it was a little bit hard to watch. <laughs> so I just put it down to double speed and, and um, worked from there. Now, one thing, I did trace the outline of the tissues poking out of my box there. And I probably should have not traced the tissue part because I, they're not, I, because the, tissues aren't the same color as the box right so but i didn't think about that when i was tracing them out i was just trying to make sure i got the the shape in and the dimension in i did even go around the tissue and add the the shadow areas onto my with my stylus traced in the shadow areas with my stylus so there is my tissue box and the only thing i have left now to do is to put my hand cream onto a piece of pink pattern paper. This hand cream is kind of like my favorite. I have a tube, a bottle, a jar everywhere in my house. There's one in my craft room, there's some in my bathroom, some on my nightstand, some in my car, some in my family room. I have this hand cream everywhere because my skin gets so dry, especially my hands with all the hand washing and stuff, gets so, so dry in the winter time. So this is my absolute favorite hand cream. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and trace that with my stylus. It is the quickest one to trace. It has the fewest lines and voila. So the next step in this is going to be to fussy cut all of these shapes out. I have a pair of EK Success. Um, they're really sharp, very thin scissors. So they make fussy cutting kind of a breeze. You can do some small detailed things. And again, this is like, you know, I didn't think about it at the time, but I didn't need to cut out the shape of the actual tissue. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and I am going to go around my tumbler and the straw and voila. So now I just need to kind of adhere them to my art journal page. Get that collage element into, into place. So the um, next debate here is, do I lay, put these on flat with gel medium? Do I use... Um, 3M foam tape. What do I do to add some dimension and texture to this? And I went back and forth. I decided I really did want to just put them down flat, but I still like the idea of texture. And, you know, so while I was um, fussy cutting those out and trimming off the edges of this, of my page, I was trying to figure out what I could do to add some texture to the background of this page. I didn't want this to be super flat. I mean, obviously it's not a three-dimensional project, but I did come up with the idea of stamps. So I have the Stampers Anonymous st stamp set that I use. They are red rubber stamps and they're mostly just script and other images that you can use for background. I have pulled out an archival jet black ink. I am also pulling out a couple of reds and pinks from my archival line. And I thought maybe it would be a good idea to use a red or a pink in the background instead of a black because I'm just trying to add a little something to the to the back to this tissue this um, pattern paper so I pulled a scrap of this in and tested it off camera and decided to use the pink the pink was very nearly the same color as the paper so it's just enough so that it looks a little bit less blah I did use two different text stamps and then I pulled out this kind of um, flourish stamp and a larger stamp block and I put a little bit of um, ink on it. I didn't try too hard to make sure there was ink over, over the entire stamp and I just stamped that down a couple of times um, just trying to add some something something to the page and for some reason I got hyper focused on the center of the page there where the collage elements are going to be. <laughs> Not sure why I did that, but I did, so whatever. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and glue these items to my page. I am going to use my gel medium again, just because it works. <laughs> it's on my desk, I'm already using it, and I do need these to be able to be moved around, to be adjusted, and um, I am pulling out my picture for reference. I want them to be non-porous so I can add that shading. So yeah, gel medium is kind of my jam for art journaling right now. Every once in a while I, I don't use it and it seems kind of weird sometimes to be honest. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and dry that off with my heat tool. I want to make sure that that gel medium is super, super dry. If you get that gel medium on the nib of any of your pens, they will not work anymore. It just completely ruins the pens. So I have pulled out a Zig pen. Um, I think this is a 0.5. Um, I can't remember what the name of the... A 0.5 is the size of the thing that writes. <laughs> the nib. <laughs> there we go. And I am just going to trace around the outside edges of these collage elements. I'm trying to kind of blend in that... Um, from the charcoal paper, the outline from the charcoal paper... I'm also trying to add the dimension back to it or the, the definition. There's a better word, the definition back to it so that you can see that there are multiple edges and surfaces of these, especially the tissue box, which is, you know, six sided. I wanted to try and make sure that that was obvious that there was a top and a front and a side. I'm not sure how well that translated, but you know, <laughs> we're going with it. Like I said, I don't, I have not really, um, spent a lot of time trying to become a, a drawer. What's the proper word there? Um, I have children who are fabulous at it, 
it's just not a talent that I ever really tried to grow. And after this um, still life experiment, it is something that maybe I want to dabble in a little bit, at least perspectives. It would be nice to be able to add some, some perspective to things and some um, like that tissue box. It would have been nice to know how to put that line in there to make sure it looked like you had the, the front and the top of the box. But you know, that's something I can work on learning this year. So I, you know, something I didn't know I was going to learn from my art journal page was another skill that maybe I want to pick up on. Um, I am trying with my pen to add in that kind of crimped edge to the top of the hand cream tube. You know how they're kind of rough and crimped, you know, where they close them up after they put the cream in them. I was trying to add that detail in. It was not the, the best, <laughs> the best um, control of that pen, but whatever, it works. So once I get the um, outline of this, my water cup done, my tumbler done, we are going to move on to the next phase. This is where I realized that I should not have cut out the shape of the tissue and because it looks weird. So what could I do to mitigate that? And I decided I was going to try and stick some regular tissue popping out of that tissue box because that's dimension, right? <laughs> it's also a little bit still life, real life fusion there. I have pulled out my pit pens to kind of do some emphasis, like the cap on the, the hand cream bottle. I am going to put the, the straw was darker in my photograph. So I'm going to color in my straw. I'm also going to put the label band on the front of the hand cream eventually. And here is where I decided to to figure out how I could put that tissue into the page. So one thing I decided to do was cut across that line on the box where the tissue is coming out. And I did a big fat dumb. <laughs> I pulled out my little Fisker's finger knife and started cutting along that curved line. And then I realized that, holy cow, I am not working on my heat, my self healing mat, I'm working on my Teflon mat. And I about had a heart attack when I realized I was going to cut through my Teflon mat. <clears throat> yeah, see right here. Big dumb. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Gratefully, between the layers of pattern paper and mixed media paper, and the fact that I was pushing very lightly, I did not even get all the way through the back of the mixed media paper by the time I realized that, oh my heavens, I'm going to put a hole in my Teflon craft or my Teflon pad. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I kind of picked that up and then realized I'm going to stab myself in the hand. So maybe let's just go with scissors. Let's use scissors. So I pulled out my EK success skinny little scissors and stuck them down in that hole that I was able to create with my Fisker's finger knife before I, you know, damaged anything. And this was not, um, the easiest part of this project, <laughs> getting this line cut open. It would have been a lot easier if I had stuck the tissue on before I glued the collage element down, but whatever, we're going through it. This also though made it so I could stick the tissue in from the back and not have to fuss with it in that way. I also did have to kind of hide the fact that I had cut out that piece of tissue or the shape of the tissue with that pattern paper. So it did require a little bit of finagling. I did, um, did, I just fussed with it with probably way too long, way longer than I should have. I had taken that tissue and torn, torn it into multiple sized pieces just to try and, and get what I needed to have, what I wanted it to look like and to hide the parts that I was trying to hide. It was kind of a weird, a weird moment. I was too, too um, stuck on the still life part of this art journal page. I think I was focusing too much on that. Um, I am trying to figure out how to make this stay flat. So I went ahead and cut the excess off, which just seemed silly and then taped it down with a piece of painter's tape. I will go ahead and cover that up at the end, but it'll kind of keep that tissue from falling out the back. And then I decided I needed another layer and tried to stick it down through the front. 
And yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> so I flipped the page back over, carefully peeled the painter's tape off, um, probably tore the tissue a little bit, but not too much. Stuck the other piece of tissue paper back up through that, that uh, hole I had cut in my art journal page. I'm telling you guys, this was just, <laughs> I was so stuck on the idea of still, still life and not being a fantastic drawing artist and um, having that not be one of my strengths that I just was stuck. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, maybe it's because January started off weird. I don't know if you listened to my video or watched my video a couple videos ago, but our January started off with five days straight of no power. Um, it just was an odd, odd beginning to a year. But anyway, we got there. The tissue's coming out of the box and it looks a lot like the tissue boxes that my kids get a hold of anyway, where, you know, you got a half ripped tissue hanging out of the box. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. It works. It gets the point of cross. You can now tell that this blue polka dot thing is supposed to be a tissue box. <laughs> the top of my cup has a silver rim around it or ring around it. So I pulled out this silver Sharpie paint, paint pen. I opted for the Sharpie because it does have that metallic look versus the pit pen, which would just look gray. And I fill, filled in, sorry, English is rough for me tonight, apparently. I filled in <laughs> that silver band that is on, like on my, my cup. And I'm starting to feel a little bit better about the direction this page is going. I've got some texture to the background. I've got some collage elements, which is kind of more my jam than actually drawing. Um, here is where I decided to go ahead and put the banner for the hand cream on the tube. Um, I started with my Zig pen, drew it in a little bit small, and then I went in with my pit pen. It has a little bit bigger nib. It'd be a little bit easier to color it in with that pen marker, whatever it's called. And, and then I will take a white gel pen and just write hand cream on the label. I don't want to, you know, it can be whatever hand cream you want it to be. I was not going to try and do the lettering. <laughs> so here is where I'm pulling out my pens for shading. So I have this red pit pen and because the background was pink, I figured I could get away with using the red to create the shadows on that, on this page. Um, I probably could have gotten away with using the brown. Um, I do like how the red works, or red looks rather. It does kind of um, add that idea of, of light and shadow in there, which is what you're going for when you're adding shadow on your pages. Um, I, I think the brown would have worked just as well. I did try the blue, and I feel like the blue was just darker, was too dark. I also tried um, the peachy color. And, and that was not quite dark enough. Um, one thing I did that was kind of, kind of extra, I feel like I did a lot of extra, is right here. I was trying to add shadow behind the tissue and it looks like um, lightning struck. I, I don't know what that is. It doesn't really look like tissue. Um, the blue did work okay with the shadow between the Kleenex box and the hand cream, the, the tissue box and the hand cream. Um, I did accidentally get some of that marker on the tissue. So then again, it looks like tissues, my kids that are in my house because my kids have grubby fingers and <laughs> get dirty all over everything. So now I've got my, my dimension in there. I did add a little bit of shadow to that. I, I like how that's looking. I have pulled out my gel pen. I will get it started on my skin. For some reason that works better than starting it on a piece of paper. I'm not sure what that's all about. Just going to write hand cream on the label of my hand cream. <laughs> and I did need to think of a title for this page. Um, I came up with winter necessities and in my delusion, I wrote it on forgetting that I have terrible handwriting. So then I pulled out a scrap paper and this is the paper that I tested my archival ink on to see which one would look better, the red or the pink. And I pulled out this delusions, um, alpha stamp, alpha set. There we go. And I'm going to stamp it on and then just create a label and cover up my handwriting, which I very carefully edited out of the video because it was just nonsense and shenanigans. So I am going to speed through the 
the stamping of this label. It, um, using the Dilution stamp set that says winter. And then I pulled out my Lawn Fawn stamp alpha set because it's a little bit smaller and it has multiples of all the letters. And I was stamping necessities and I put it on my um, stamp block with a, with a grid on it so I could make sure and line up those little tiny stamps really well. And I had enough doubles of everything except I needed one more S. So I got necessity all at one time. Then I had to go back through with that last S to stamp that on. The cool thing about Lawn Fawn Alpha Stamps is that each letter is the same size block. So as long as you line them up with the bottoms all on the same line, they will stamp pretty well awesome. I won't say they're perfect. I wasn't going for perfect. I was going for better than my handwriting, <laughs> which I got here. I am going to use a pair of scissors and trim that out. Just make it a little close to the word label. I don't need it to be, in fact, from a distance, when you look at the page, you can't even really tell that it's there. Shh, don't tell anybody, only you and, you know, you and I are the only ones who will know that that's a label that covers up my messy handwriting because shenanigans, shenanigans. I should never have done it in pen. I should always start in pencil and trace over it, but I didn't. And I think I even spelled necessities wrong. I mean, shenanigans. We're just calling that what it is. But I went ahead and put that label down and gratefully because the paper is the same and I have stamped that texture background on both of them. It kind of blends right in. So this is my ode to still life. I am going to go ahead and sign and date this for January 22 and hole punch it. I need to hole punch this to fit into my binder and my video last, my last art journal video was the creation of my cover. And I will try and remember to link that right up here at the top. I am going to adhere the prompt to the back of this art journal page so that when I look back at this, I can wonder what in the heck I was thinking about putting Kleenex on my art journal page. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you enjoyed my shenanigans. <laughs> I am grateful every time you guys stop by to watch my videos. I have um, added some photographs for you to look at, little zoom in, zoom in action. I have also attached or added, I'm not sure what the right word would be, a couple of videos for you to also watch and a subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and maybe share my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a fabulous day.